Babylon 5, it's kind of funny, actually. My wife and I booked a holiday, a local holiday. We were taking the train down to San Diego. It was no big thing, but we had booked our hotels, and we were just going to go down to San Diego for, I don't know, four or five days and just take a little chill time. And my agents at the time, who were less than impressive, honestly, called and said, you have an audition for um, a syndicated show. Uh, it's a science fiction show. And I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm kind of, I've got plans. Well, you have an audition. And I remember Eileen looked at me and she said, well, we can, my wife Eileen said, we can change. We can always go to San Diego. You know, it's sci-fi. They like, you're, you know, you're a sci-fi guy. Go, go ahead, go on the audition. If you, and I went in <clears throat> and I, you know, I, I, I got the scenes and uh, all I knew, I, there had been a pilot, but I hadn't seen it. And all I knew was that this character had been raised in a uh, alien, he was an alien, and he had been raised in a monastery. He was kind of a, a spiritual, naive guy who'd never been out of this small, protective environment. And now he was suddenly thrust into this big community of multi-planetary beings. And he was kind of, he was there to serve this, this being from his planet as an ambassador, as an ambassadorial aide. And everything was like, he was in awe of, of everything. So I played him as, in the audition, I played him as a, the character of Lanier. I played him as a cross between uh, David Carradine's Kane from uh, uh, Kung Fu and young Billy Moomy kind of Huckleberry finish was my choice. And uh, I went in and that's how I played him. And there was, you know, the handful of producers. And it wasn't at a studio. It was at a hot tub factory that had been turned into like this little private, we're making a television series out here in Sun Valley. It wasn't an impressive place to go to. And I wasn't familiar with much of anybody's, obviously, you know, Joe Straczynski and Doug Netter and these people had great, impressive resumes, but you know what, I wasn't really aware of them, and it was like, I'm going out here for the syndicated show, okay, here's my audition, blah, 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 bye. And I get this call the next day, I guess, or maybe two days later, from my uh, agent at the time, uh, and he tells me for the first time, uh, you know, it's a, it's a five-year, it's a series. I thought I was just reading for a guest shot on a syndicated show, right? It, it, it didn't seem like a big deal to me. It was just, okay, I'm reading a couple of scenes. It's a guest shot on a syndicated show. The money's not going to be very good, blah, blah, blah. And he's not a human. So I get this call. They, they, they want to, it's a series deal. They want to make a five-season deal with you. And um, they, they want to close it by 6 o'clock. Now, my wife was pregnant with our daughter. My son was three. I hadn't been working very much as an actor at that point in time. And I say to Eileen, wow, I, you know, I didn't know it was going to be a series thing. I thought it was just a guest shot. No, it's, it's five, five seasons, blah, blah, blah. And um, honestly, the money wasn't really, it wasn't like big time showbiz money, which is I was still, I mean, you know, it's, it's money, but it, it, it wasn't like, you're kidding impressive money. Um, so I, I say to my agent, well, what does this guy look like? Because I know he's not a human being. I've grown up on Lost in Space and everything else, and I got no answer. I got no answer whatsoever. So for the, uh, for the second time in my entire career, I bypassed an agent, I picked up the phone, and I called John Copeland, who was the producer, uh, not the uh, not the executive producer, but he was the actual like you know daily producer of the show, uh, and this was like five o'clock, uh, you know. And I called him. I got him on the phone. I said, "Hey, John, you know, Mumi here. I'm flattered. I didn't know it was a series 
thing. Uh, this guy's not a human. Uh, I'm telling you now, uh, I will not and cannot wear lenses. I won't put lenses in my eye. And I want to know how long I'm going to be in the chair. Because they wouldn't send me an image. Because the, the, I played a Minbari from the planet Minbar. And in the pilot episode that they had shot, uh, there were Minbari, but they were changing that look dramatically. So they didn't want to send me a, from what the pilot had looked like because it, it was much more extreme than what it was going to be. So I say to John Copeland, how long am I going to be in the chair? And John Copeland says to me, about an hour. I say, okay, thanks. I get off the phone, I say to my wife, he says, it's about an hour. You know, I was there when we were doing Planet of the Apes. I was in the chair when they turned Will Robinson into Dr. Smith. I know what an hour in the chair means. It can't be that bad. It can't be. And as I said, we were pregnant with our daughter, and it was science fiction, which I really gravitate to and I like. Uh, so we, my wife and I said, well, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Close the deal. So I call back to my agents. Seriously, uh, you know, it's very depressing when I get into representation levels because, anyway. Um, so we accept the deal. Okay, I go to work, day one. I show up in the makeup room. There is an actress who was uh, cast to play an alien, not a Minbari, but whatever, a Narn. And as I am showing up in the makeup room, she is freaking out, she is crying, and she is saying, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. And John Copeland and Jace, Joe, Joe Straczynski all are coming in, and I don't know really who's who, I know, you know, who's Joe, who's John, who's Doug. I mean, I met them at the audition, and you know, all I know is these are the guys. They're all coming in, telling her, don't worry, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be great, and she bolts. She goes, nope, can't do it, and quits. And this is before I've started to sit down. They get another actress, an hour later, there's another gal who took that part, and she's fine. Sure, turn me into a lizard. Now, this, is, this, is, this was my initial energy, and it was intense. It was really intense. I mean, she was freaking out. Obviously, she wanted that job, and she just couldn't deal with it. So I sit down in the chair with the mantra in my head that John Copeland had said to me on the phone, about an hour. Four and a half hours later, I look at myself and I am now Lanier, the Minbari. Four and a half hours later. I have a four-year-old son. My wife is pregnant with our daughter. Honestly, I don't need the money. I, I, my father invested my earlier work well for me. I don't need the money. I wanted the money, but I don't need the money. And four and a half hours it takes to turn me into this character. And I'm, I'm a professional guy. I've been doing this since I was five years old. And I don't want to repeat to these people what I just saw. I don't want to freak out and go, I'm out of here, right? Joe Straczynski comes up to me and says, you look great. And I said to him, can I tell you something? And he said, sure. I said, I don't know if I can do this. I said, you know, John told me an hour, and this took four and a half hours, and I really don't know if I can do this. And I asked for a meeting with them before we shot one second of film. And I don't know how many actors would ever have kind of taken this perspective. I said, look, I'm here, and I will honor my agreement to be here. But if you guys have a plan for this guy <laughs> to, like, become the guy, I can't do it. I won't do it. I said, I'm not going to do this every day. I won't. I said, so I don't know how many actors are going to tell you, don't, don't make me the guy. But I'm telling you, if you have a plan that this is going to be the guy, you got to get somebody else, because I won't do it. And so Straczynski said to me, there will be some episodes you don't work in at all. 
there will be some episodes you work a day in, and there will be some episodes you work every day in. And he was true to that. And uh, I did it for uh, five years and 110 shows. And the, the talented craftsmen at Optic Nerve, the alien makeup people, were great people, wonderful, wonderful, nice, generous, talented people. And they got the process of becoming Lanier from four and a half hours down to two hours, which is a big difference. But I have to say, I have to be honest about it, I never acclimated to wearing that makeup. It was incredibly restricting. I couldn't hear a thing. I had foam rubber over my ears, little, little ears glued onto my neck, but my, my actual ears were underneath a bald cap and then a foam rubber bone. Um, taking, it, it was five years. It became a ritual of you're in this makeup chair at like four o'clock in the morning, 4.30 in the morning. First of all, I got two little kids at home. I'm waking up at 3.30, four o'clock in the morning for a 4.30, five o'clock call. I'm going to work and I'm sitting in the makeup chair and it became this ritual of, okay, I've made a 90 minute tape, cassette of mixed music. I'm sitting there, I'm not sleeping, but I'm gonna just listen to the music, I'm just gonna sit there and you're gonna do what you do and you're gonna put glue all over my forehead and you're gonna put glue all over the side of my face and you're gonna glue this rubber to my face and you're gonna glue this rubber to my neck. Then you're gonna put this heinous spun rubber bone over my head and glue it on <clears throat> and 12 or 13 hours later, you're gonna take it off. Taking it off was much worse than putting it on because when you put it on, you kind of close your eyes, it's the middle of the night or the early morning and you're just kind of forgetting about it. Taking it off, you have to sit there with two washcloths over your eyes like this while these very nice people and very talented craftsmen start pouring these solvents on your skin and peeling this rubber off your face. And you can't get any of these solvents in your eyes or you'll be really fucked up. So you're just sitting there like this while they're peeling this sh shit off your face. It was unpleasant. 